Welcome to the R video tutorial on reading in data. Again, this time TXT files or text files. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. All right, so this is the second in a series of videos that you should look at in order to learn how to read in various types of files. Uh, there's a link above that should lead you to the one, the video on how to read in CSV files or comma separated value files. And any data sets that we're going to use are in the description below or a link to the folder that has all of these data sets. Okay, so the data that we're going to use today is the chlorine.txt data set. And I've just opened it up here in our studio and I'm going to look at it. And what you can clearly see is it looks a little bit different than our CSV. Uh, we have weeks and then we have chlorine uh, and this is chlorine exposure data. So here we have our column is 8, 10, 10, 10 corresponds to weeks and chlorine is a chlorine concentration. Okay, now at first it looks like there's just a space between uh, the data. But in this case, if you look down here after the 10, there seems to be a little bit more going on here. And it's actually a tab that's between these. So that's going to be important when we read in our data because what we're going to learn is more of a generic technique of reading in data. All right, so let's jump back here. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to read in text. So uh, I'm going to name this thing chlorine. I'm going to use the assignment operator. And here I'm going to use read and dot. And CSV is what we used last time. Here we're going to use table. Table's more generic than specifically a CSV. And you can actually use read.table to read in a CSV. All right, so uh, we're going to use the first approach, which we used last time for redundancy, which is the file.choose approach. And again, we're going to have a header because we noticed that the first row in the data set was the column names. Uh, the, the key here is we need to also tell it what separates the values. And that's where the SEP comes in. This stands for separator. And in our case, this is text. So since it's text, our separator, we're going to use uh, is a tab. And that's backslash T in R. So if you're going to say it's looking for a tab, you would put backslash T in here. And you should probably comment that. So this is uh, separator for tab. Okay, so this is our tab uh, separator. All right, so let's see if this works. So I'm going to run this. All right, our window popped up, and I put this data set on the desktop. Here it is, chlorine.txt. I'm going to open that. And if I look over here, I can see that it shows up in my environment. So if I click on it, I can actually look at it and see that it read in correctly. And again, I'm going to use the head function as I did before, just so I can have it in my code so that when I just run things, I can check things without having to go over here into the uh, environment all the time. And if I do this, this will show me the first six rows. And I can see the first six rows. And you can see that the names pulled in as well because I used the header equals true. You can also do this with the path approach, which I'm also going to re do here. So I'm going to do chlorine2, uh, the assignment operator, again, read.table. And here I'm going to actually put in the path to it. So uh, the twiddle and this will get me to my user directory on a Mac and a Linux machine. Otherwise you have to start with like C colon, whatever, whatever your username is, and then uh, navigate your way to your desktop. But you need to know the path. So here I know that it is on the desktop and it's named chlorine. Okay. So this approach is much better than the other approach in the sense that I actually know where the data was and what the data was named. Notice in the above, I didn't actually put in chlorine.txt, which I probably should do. 
we know what the header is. We know that it has one, so we can put here true. And again, our separator is the tab, which is backslash T. And if I run this, it should read in chlorine two. And again, it reads it in just fine. I can look at it here, or I could use the head function. Uh, I can also use the working directory approach, and that will help as well. And the working directory approach is in the CSV version of this tutorial. So look at the previous video that was linked before, and you will see how to use the working directory approach. And in general, we want to use a working directory. Now, to be complete, we should probably put in here which file we were actually trying to read in. So chlorine.txt. You should always have the file name that you're reading in whenever you have an R data set or an R script is, is to make sure that you're reading in the same data that you think you're reading in. Uh, because lots of people have lots of different data and this is pretty generic. So always have the name somewhere around. This approach, the path approach has the name around directly in the file name for the path to the file. All right, uh, this is the next step in learning how to read in data. We're gonna learn how to read in some data from a SPSS file uh, in the next video.